I'm going to use my rigger, which is perfect for the small little details just like this. Did you just start with watercolors and you want to explore how to paint landscapes in this medium? Well, if you are, then this video will be perfect for you. We're going to paint a beautiful winter scene in watercolors with only two pigments. And I'm going to be using this art book from Canson. The first thing that we want to do is paint wet in wet. And we're going to divide the paper into thirds. So the top two thirds, we're going to apply some water there. And a great way of doing that is using a flat brush, just like this one. So I'm going to apply some water to the brush and then paint with just water on the top two thirds. When you make the paper wet like this and then you apply paint to it, the paint will travel freely on the surface, on the wet surface, and this will create a uh, a unique effect for watercolor and this technique is called wet in wet. Now make sure that you get water all across this top third so you don't miss any parts of the paper. Now it's time to start preparing some paint and I'm using ultramarine blue to start with and I'm going to create a pool of paint in my palette here. So one little tip for you if you're starting out painting is making sure that you have more paint than you need. So uh, try to mix a nice big pool of paint more than you actually think that you're going to need. And we're going to also use some burnt umber. So I'm going to create a pool for that as well. And uh, for the painting itself, we're going to use a mix of these two. When you're mixing ultramarine blue and burnt umber, which is blue and brown, you will create beautiful grays and blacks. And that's what we're going to use for the whole landscape painting. And when you have two big pools of paint, one in brown and one in blue, it's time to start mixing a little bit. So starting on the edge a little bit like this, adding a little bit of blue at a time until you have a gray that you want to go with. And I'm going for a gray that is cool, so it has a little bit of blue in it. It looks more blue than brown, but it's still gray. And now it's time for the fun stuff to start. So I'm applying this paint that we just mixed in the palette to the wet surface of the paper. And as you can see, the pigment is moving freely on the paper and we don't have any sharp edges anywhere. And what I'm doing right now, I'm actually painting a silhouette of a lot of trees far away in the distance. And while the paint is still wet, we're going to try to adjust the mix of paint a little bit. We're going to use the same pigments as before, but this time we're going to try to make it a little bit thicker. And having a thick mix of paint is helpful when you want to create darker values in your painting. So make sure that you add more blue and more brown to the mix without dipping the brush into water. And the thicker paint will create darker values in your painting. So now the paint is a lot thicker and I'm going to apply it to the area that I already painted and it's still wet. This is quite important because if the paper is dry then it's too late. Then you're going to end up with a different technique which is wet on dry. But now we're trying to focus on painting wet in wet. And just by gently touching the surface of the paper like this with the brush we'll create these trees that are a little bit darker in value. And I'm thinking that it looks like those trees are a little bit closer to us than those that are lighter in value. And already by just doing these few techniques, we have created a sense of depth in our painting. And to enhance the depth even more, we can paint a stream going through the landscape. And an effective way of doing that is painting it with an S shape. This will create a composition called S composition. So I'm using the same pigments that I already have in the palette, which is the dark blue or bluish gray that we have in the palette. And a great brush for this is using a rigger, just like this one, for the small details further back. And since we want to create the sense of depth, the stream should naturally become a little bit bigger when it comes to the foreground. So I'm switching back to the big brush right here. And the S shape that we're painting here is leading the eye into the distance. And that's an effective way of creating distance in your painting. Now we're going to switch to another technique. I'm going to take another brush and put some water on it. So I'm going to dip the brush into water 
and then I'm gonna apply the water on the edge here in the foreground and this will create a transition from the dark to light by doing this we're gonna create the effect of shiny water and that's what we're going for so it already looks uh, quite shiny I think uh, but we're gonna make it look even shinier here in a little bit and now we have applied the first layer of paint which is also known as the first wash and I'm gonna let it dry completely but first I'm gonna remove some of the excess paint that's on the tape on the sides to make sure that we don't have any unwanted backgrounds and after this I'm taking my hairdryer to speed up the drying process a little bit if you don't have a hairdryer then you can just wait it out it'll probably take you a few minutes for the paint to completely dry so this is what the first wash looks like and I must say that it looks quite promising so now we're going to start with the second wash and what I want to do is paint a tree somewhere in the foreground and to do that, I'm going to use the same pigments as before. Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. And once again, I'm going for a thick mix. And as you probably remembered, we don't want to apply too much water. So you have to make sure that you keep adding paint from the palette and not dipping your brush into water. And when the paint has a thick consistency, it's time to paint the tree. And I'm going to do it by doing a bold brush stroke somewhere from the foreground and straight up. And after that, switching to a rigger, a small brush like this, and apply a few branches here and there. And since we have a stream in front of the tree, we of course need to paint a reflection. And the reflection needs to go straight down from the tree. And I'm using the same pigments as I used for the tree, just like this. And just by doing this, then we will tell the viewer that the water is really shiny because it's reflecting the tree. Since I painted the tree and the reflection of the tree on dry paper, I ended up with a sharp edge. And I want to do a different technique for the reflections for the trees in the distance. And to do that, I'm re-wetting the surface of the paper where the stream is, just like this. And apply some paint on this area. And this is called wet and wet, as I mentioned before. So I'm applying some paint here to the wet surface. And I'm thinking that this paint is reflections for those trees that we can see far back in the background. When you're painting these reflections wet and wet, and you feel like the pigment is almost disappearing when you're painting it, that means that the consistency of the paint that you just added to the wet surface is not thick enough. So there is still time. The paint is still wet, so I'm gonna make sure that my mix of paint that I'm adding is a little bit thicker and then I'm going to redo the process one more time. And as you can see, now there's a big difference from before. The paint that I'm adding is a lot darker and it has more of a defined reflection that I'm going for. And for the smaller details on the stream, I'm switching brushes again and I'm going to use my rigger, which is perfect for the small little details just like this. And now the second wash is done, so I'm going to dry the paper one more time using my hairdryer. And after that, we're going to finish up this painting, this uh, winter landscape that is pretty simple, by using a last technique. So I have some white paint in my palette. This is Chinese white, and I'm using a toothbrush. And by doing this, I can sprinkle a little bit of white on the surface of the paper, indicating some snow, which is perfect for a winter landscape just like this. And the painting is all done. A simple watercolor, winter landscape, using only two pigments with a few easy techniques. It doesn't get much easier than this. So my advice to you as a complete beginner is to practice this landscape, not one time, not two times, but at least three times, until you get the hang of the techniques. And when you feel comfortable with them, then you're ready to do something more advanced. And of course, you're welcome to join my Patreon. I post a tutorial uh, with a lot of landscapes, for example, every week. If you want to find out more about my Patreon, you have all the links in the end of this video. Okay guys, I hope you had a great time during this tutorial and hopefully you feel inspired 
uh, to continue exploring this uh, exciting medium of watercolor. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.